Now, the Houston area usually sees the peak of respiratory illnesses right about this time of year. The highest flu activity usually hitting right about now. Dr. David Purse, Chief Medical Officer for the City of Houston, joining me live this morning to remind us what people really need to know when they get diagnosed with these respiratory illnesses. Good morning, Dr. Purse. Good morning, Haley. Thanks for having me. So first, just give us an overview of the current activity of, of flu, COVID, RSV. I know you guys are able to monitor the wastewater, so you really know, even if people don't go to the doctor, just how much of it is in our community. Yeah, so a uh, good question. And, you know, since COVID in 2019, you know, the, these, the, the viral activity has been very different than usual, but we're getting back towards normal. So this year, We've already seen uh, at least one peak with RSV and with flu, not at the same time, RSV first and flu. They peaked and then they, they come down. Now they haven't gone back down to zero, but they've come down and now they really sort of leveled off, which is not uncommon. Uh, we just, like you point out, it's usually this time of the year we're getting the peak and they came a little bit earlier this year. Now the groups that we're seeing it, uh, the flu in particular, most is, is our youngers. It's our, our teenage kids at five to 17 year old age group. Uh, that's the group that we're seeing a lot of flu activity right now. Uh, you mentioned COVID. COVID is still in the neighborhood, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, our wastewater is showing it was showing it going up week over week. Uh, the hospitalizations, however, have been only trending up slightly. So we used to see this when the wastewater would go up right behind it, the hospitalizations would go up. Now we're seeing the wastewater go up and the hospitalizations are going up at a, a much gentler uh, 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 slope, if you will. And so that's that's good news. Yeah, it is good news. Um, but who should we be watching closely? I mean, we saw a lot of video just now of kids. You're saying that kids are, are the ones being hit right now with flu. Should we be particularly concerned about them if they come down with a virus like that? Well, absolutely, kids, and we, we hear this every year, especially the really little ones, the, the newborns, those less than a year age, or children that have got complicated medical problems, in particular respiratory problems, uh, those are the ones that you know I personally worry about the, the very most. The other, um, the other age group is the one that I'm joining every year is the, the elderly, right? So as we get older, our immune systems weaken. And so, and as we get older, we also develop lots of different medical problems. So whether it be asthma, emphysema, chronic bronchitis, uh, particularly respiratory illnesses, those will put us at greater risk of requiring hospitalization from these viruses. So those are the two groups that I worry about about the most. You know, Dr. Purse, it's a good reminder for people in those age, age brackets to remember that this is something that can turn complicated kind of quickly with them. Um, and I'm hearing of a lot of people for the very first time being diagnosed with COVID or getting the flu. And um, they know they're in those age brackets, but they don't really know what to do. Is there a step they should take when they're first diagnosed? Like, should they be getting on an antiviral? Should they be asking about monoclonal antibodies? I mean, these are things that we talked about during the pandemic time after time, but now if people are getting diagnosed for the first time, they, mm -hmm. they might not know what to do. Yeah, so, you know, two things to your question. Number one is certainly with flu, um, COVID, and even for some folks with RSV, there are vaccines that are available. And what we're hearing from my, my colleagues who work in the hospital, in the emergency department, and in the intensive care unit in particular, what they're telling me right now, almost everyone who's admitted to the intensive care unit with COVID never got vaccinated. Um, remember that if you get vaccinated with COVID, it almost it reduces your chances of requiring hospitalization by about half, right? So the first thing to do is make sure you get vaccinated against those things that you are eligible to get vaccinated against. And with RSV, you may need to talk to your doctor and find out whether or not you qualify, but COVID and flu, they're available to pretty much everybody, right? And then your other question, which is a really important one, is about when you start developing symptoms, you know, the, the medications you can take after the illness has started. And there are antiviral medications which are really very effective uh, for flu and for COVID. Now, they're not the same medicine. So the first thing you need to do is figure out what you're infected with. And so the COVID tests that are out there are really very specific to COVID. So those are very good. You can, uh, and the other challenge is that for both of these medications, you need to start taking them very early, really within the first few days of your infection in order for them to have an, an, an impact. And of course, the sooner you start them, the better. Now that can be a problem for some folks because let's say I get my symptoms on Friday evening, right? Mm -hmm. Well, my doctor's office is gonna be closed over the weekend. 
So most doctor's offices do have a, a service that covers the doctor's office over the weekends. You should still make that call to your doctor's office. They should have ways available for you to get your medication. And for those folks who don't have it, then you can call your health departments and, and um, you know, we may be able to help you out in that case. Oh, you can call the health department. I didn't. I actually didn't realize that you could be able to help with, with antivirals and things like that. Well, so we don't prescribe them, but we, we may be able to help you over the, you know, navigate who to get to, whether it be a clinic okay. or, the, or we know the hospital. We, and, you know, and the other thing is that, you know, we talk about the city, I talk about the city health department, but, you know, the county health departments are in our, in our surrounding community and in your viewing area, mm -hmm. uh, they may have options too. Again, I can't make any guarantees, but you want to start the medicines as quick as you possibly can. Therefore, start making the calls to see what you can, what you can get done. And I got to say that even though we live in a world now where COVID is just another virus that's circulating, it's still helpful to know when you've had an exposure so that you can test and ask about an antiviral. So people who are still being honest about, you know, testing and, and letting somebody know if they've had an exposure, then that person can do the right thing for them once they develop yeah. symptoms. Yeah. Remember, remember the, the person that you're most likely to infect is quite honestly just a member of your own family. And so while you may be young and healthy and be able to take on the world, if you've got a small child or an elder person in your home, you really need to be concerned about them and do what you can to protect yourself so you don't inadvertently spread it to that person who may not do so well should they become infected. Yeah, very good reminders. Dr. David Purse, thank you for joining us this morning. We appreciate your time. Thank you.